In this video, I'm going to talk about sex-linked inheritance and how it is different from traditional one-trait inheritance because these genes are on the sex chromosomes, which men and women have slightly different sex chromosomes, and that's going to change how we think about the inheritance. Um, these, remember that men have XY sex chromosomes. For everything we're going to study here, the genes are always going to be on the X sex chromosome. Uh, sorry men, uh, Y chromosomes really don't have very many genes on them. They're pretty small and pathetic, uh, um, so we're not going to really study Y-linked inheritance here. Um, so if we're going to represent the genotype of men, we're going to want to represent those sex chromosomes, and we typically write it like this. Uh, an X uh, with the allele written kind of as a superscript, or sort of to the top right of the X chromosome, and then uh, show the Y, but don't show anything with it because these genes are always on the X. Um, the biggest mistake I see students make is sometimes they do write some kind of letter with the Y and that's wrong. Uh, the Y chromosome just carries different genes. So I uh, represent it this way. And if we were to think again about how dad might pass on these chromosomes to his gametes, we need to think about meiosis. So we would copy all of these chromosomes. We would line them up side by side and split them in the first division, then split the copies in the second division. And we'd see that for his gametes, he can either pass on his X with the dominant allele, or he could pass on his Y. Uh, we'll see later that dad could also potentially be X little B Y. He could carry the recessive allele on his X chromosome, and then that he could pass on these for his gametes. Okay, and if we were to think about females, we'll see that females are pretty much the same as in traditional one trait inheritance problems because females have two X chromosomes. Uh, we still want to represent those X chromosomes in the genotype, so maybe write it this way. So maybe mom is X big B, X little b, um, showing the gene on both of her X chromosomes. And if we were to think about her meiosis, we would uh, still think about uh, copying both. We would think about splitting up the homologous pairs in the first division, and then perhaps splitting up the copies in the second division. And we would see that mom could either pass on her X with the dominant allele or her X with the recessive allele. Uh, mom could also be homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive um, in other cases. And we would see that in those cases, there's really only one different kind of gamete she could make, either passing on her dominant allele or her recessive allele. All right, so, um, and, and then from there, it's a traditional uh, uh, Punnett square analysis. And so let's just do some practice problems showing the full steps. I'll work two. Uh, so in the first example, maybe having hemophilia, which is a disorder of blood clotting. Um, so people who have hemophilia um, get a cut and they might bleed for a lot longer um, than um, people who don't have hemophilia. So if it's sex-linked recessive and on the X chromosome, um, that means having hemophilia is recessive but not having it is dominant. So if it's on the X chromosome, let's include the X in our legend and let's make uh, the uppercase letter and the lowercase letter. The uppercase letter is dominant, so that's not having hemophilia whereas the um, lowercase letter is having hemophilia. And I'm just gonna write hemo here, if you don't mind me abbreviating. Okay, and then let's figure out dad and mom. Um, let's think about their chromosomes. Remember that mom is X and X, so she has two alleles, whereas dad is X and Y, and he only has the allele on his X. So if mom is heterozygous, then she would be um, capital R, uh, capital H, now I'm using R's, uh, capital H, little h, sorry about that. And then if dad doesn't have hemophilia, he must have a big H for his one and only allele. If we were to think about the gametes that both of these parents could make, um, dad could either pass on his X with the big H or his Y. Um, and mom um, could either pass on the X with her big H or her X with the little h. So we're gonna need to make a two by two for this particular Punnett square. So let's uh, do that. Let's say that dad here is uh, this and can either pass on that or that. And if mom was heterozygous, then mom could either pass on that or that. And so let's make that square. And 
and then carefully make sure you're combining your rows and your columns correctly. Typically we represent the X first and uppercase alleles first. So those would be my uh, possibilities. So every child that's, that's produced from these two parents could be one of these four possibilities. First of all, you'll notice that there's always going to be a half uh, chance that you um, have a son and a half chance that you have a daughter. Um, notice that dad also determines the sex of the child depending on whether he passed on his X or his Y. Um, and if we were interested in studying um, the odds of, of, I didn't actually write a question here, but maybe the odds that a child has hemophilia, we would see that definitely these two offspring, these two potential offspring would not, right? They have the dominant H only. This daughter, this potential daughter, actually has a recessive allele, but the dominant allele would dominate, so she would not either. And there is a one in four chance of having a son um, who actually does show having hemophilia. So overall, one in four chances of having a child with hemophilia. Um, and as it turns out, those children would always be sons. Um, you could never have a daughter with hemophilia. And actually, this kind of interesting result is how we first figured out sex-linked inheritance. Um, we figured out that sex-linked recessive disorders show up far more often in men than women because men only have one X chromosome, and so it's easier for them to show the recessive phenotype um, because they don't have to have two lowercase letters like women. Okay, let's do a second problem just for additional practice. Let's say that red-green color blindness is also sex-linked recessive. So um, let's draw our legend again. Let's make maybe R's for our legend here. Let's say the dominant allele is not having color blindness. So I'm just gonna write not CB, whereas the lowercase r is having color blindness or having CB. Okay, let's think about dad and mom again. We know that dad is XY with only an allele on the X, and we know that mom is XX with alleles on both X chromosomes. Dad is colorblind this time, so that must mean he's a lowercase r for his X chromosome. Mom is homozygous dominant, so she has the same dominant or uppercase alleles. If we think about the gametes that dad and mom might pass on, we know that dad might pass on his X little r or his Y. Uh, mom really only has one gamete. She can only pass on her X with the big R. So that's gonna help me when I build my Punnett diagram because maybe I'm just gonna build a one by two. So let's do that. Let's say that mom is over here, homozygous dominant, and here is just her one gamete that she can pass on. Here's dad and the two gametes that he can pass on, and I'm gonna make a one by two. And here is the potential daughter that can be made, and here is the potential son. If I were interested once again, I know I didn't write a question here, but maybe the odds of having a colorblind child. Um, we see that really neither child here will show colorblindness. This daughter here will carry the recessive allele, but the dominant trait will dominate. And so neither child, a zero and two chance of having a colorblind child here.